All right, welcome to Mega Net Gaming. Today we're doing a short review and brief discussion of the lore of the Hammer's End, a phase journey. And this is from the 14-day trial where we probably played about two or three hours, so this is definitely a first impressions of the game, how the very early game experience is. It's possible the dungeons and the end game stuff at the very end might be amazing, but we're just discussing the beginning experience and what we saw. Hammer's End is created by Adventure World Studios, LLC. It was released on May 1st of 2013. It's a fantasy MMORPG. It has optional PvP. And at present, it is a very low population game. You can download it from thehammersend.com and get your 14-day free trial there. From what I heard, this could be wrong. I think the actual subscription cost is something like $5 a month. So it is it is a subscription game in a market full of free-to-play games. So anyway, let's go ahead and start discussing more of the game. Transition. So what we have are two different factions. We have the Woodland faction and the Marsh faction. The Woodland have the Burwood, Brownie, and Elves, while the Marsh has the Frogmen, Nocturne, and Fairies. It's definitely a unique set of creatures. They didn't just go with the standard, oh, we're going to have Dwarves, Humans, Orcs. Just make it interesting. Problem is, there isn't a whole lot of lore provided or backstory or really much of anything to get you to understand why why you'd be why why are the woodland feature creatures fighting the marsh creatures? Why why are we here? It's very much a very much a game where you have to kind of create your own story as you go along, and you're given little pieces here and there of what's going on. And it does give you some backstory of each creature when the game starts. So let's go on. I'll go ahead and show some gameplay footage while we discuss the game further. Let's go here. There we go. There's the game. Got the got the Nocturne running around. So what we have, you have two factions with three races apiece. There's six classes, and certain races can only be certain classes. The classes are Shadow Knight, Paladin, Shaman, Druid, Necromancer, and Witch. There's also three different specialization paths at the end game they can do to add additional additional stuff to do once you reach the level cap. Let's see. So the brownies are the pagan naturalist who harness both the power of good and evil. Very much, let's see if I can get a picture of them pulled up on here. I didn't plan this all that well. But yeah, well, we'll go ahead and get a picture of them pulled up. Planned it better than I would have. There we go. We got the Burwood creature here. Not the Burwood, I mean the Brownie. Definitely a unique art style to the game. And it does use a something called the Atmosphere Engine, which is a custom engine. And there's a lot of particle effects. There's a lot of 2D sprites that are put together to make objects look 3D. Like in the old days where you had like the, the cross, you had the two... The two pictures of leaves on the tree, you make them into like a, you put them at 90 degree angles and it looks 3D from a distance. But they, a lot of the, the models and the 2D textures and everything look quite good for the game. So there you have the brownie. There's your burwood. I'll show off the rest of them. There's your elf. Which I, I found the marsh creatures much more interesting. You have the, you have your group here, the, the the frogmen race. 
right here, which is what Megan played as. No, oh wait, that's not the one I want. I want the Nocturne. Where'd the Nocturne go? There's a the Nocturne. They're descendants of the Frogmen. They're less waterbound. They formed an alliance with the Frogmen to help count, combat the brownies and the burwood. So in the starting screen, where if you go through the character selection, you do get you do get some basic backstory of what's going on. But yeah, let's go back, go to the gameplay footage, and start discussing the game a bit more. So yeah, the the movement is movement is fluid enough. It, it the jumps are a bit floaty. Camera does swing around a bit awkwardly. When you cast spells, it does do unique particle effects that are neat to look at. But the combat, like right here, is, is very floaty and lacks really any sense of... And it's not... There's no visceral feel to the combat at all. It's almost like... It's almost like you're telling somebody else to tell somebody else to hit a button to attack. But it, apparently they are working on new animations and everything. But yeah, mo most of this game in the early game is you, you go around, you take a quest, you're told to collect such and such amount of X object, you have to go kill X amount of next object, and then you go on to the next village. There, the zones are quite varied, though. You have, the, you have a swamp zone, you have a winter zone, there's a desert-looking zone. It's quite actually quite a bit of area you can cover and explore. There's not not really a whole lot in a lot of them. There, there's some villages here and there, but there's a lot of empty space as far as actual gaming content goes. Yeah, there might be like the particle effects here for the snow and trees, but there, there's not really much you can do, especially if there's nobody else playing. And I think that's what hindered the experience most is when we were on. The most we saw on was when Meg and I happened to run into somebody that was testing things on the server. Uh, one of the testers or developers was on. So it, it might have actually peaked at three players. So there's a picture of the map. It's quite a cute looking map. It gives enough, gives you enough information to actually get around quite easily. And there, there is enough variation in the environment, especially with the a lot of use of, there's a lot of hills, and a lot of different trees, rock placements, etc., where you can actually navigate quite well just by, just by landmarks. So really, in the, our my final opinion was, outside of the cute visuals. And the, the somewhat interesting backstory. Once you once you get into the game, it, the initial experience is very grindy, without any purpose being given to you. It's kind of make your own adventure, but by the way, you get to do these fetch and kill tasks over and over. I d I did like that it does have a death penalty, and there is. It does hold back, I think, half your experience for a while for each time you die. So there is actual consequences to death in a game, which a lot of games don't have anymore. So, so Megasaurus, on Megasaurus, what did you think of this game when you played it? What was it like being one of the frog creatures? I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I think it was... It was pretty fun playing it. Um, well, let's say you couldn't. Play I don't know. It, it kind of lagged in certain areas, like you were saying. But um, like, I don't know. It's hard for me to say. Like, it was really hard playing. I mean, I can see how people aren't playing it as often as they were back in 2013. That you were telling me, like I, I don't know, you didn't throw that fact out in this video yet, but um, yeah, it, yeah, it very much doesn't play like a 2020 game, which is fine. There's lots of a lot of people still play like Azeron's Call, and the original EverQuest has Project 99, uh -huh. but it, 
but with a lot of those games, you have the benefit of a community there. And I think that's the biggest issue with this game. If you had a group of people playing, then you could work together, develop a story, actually have them actually have a group of Nocturne and Grup, the frogmen, actually go to battle against some brownies. But with nobody playing, it's just an empty world and you're thrown in here without much purpose. Right. It'd be like if you're dropped off in an abandoned town and told to get a job and be productive, but it's a ghost town. Like, what do you like, do? Like, well, I was telling you, like, with those flurries or whatever those things are coming up the screen, I didn't, I could do without that. It's hard for me, like, seeing when those things are coming at the screen, but, like, you know, I have trouble seeing <laughs> anyway with some games. Like, yeah, well, you know, you know, anyway, you know, even without things coming at the screen. So, yeah, I could do without those things. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was a cute game, you know, it was fun. But, yeah, you have to have um, some sort of storyline when it comes to certain games, you know. <laughs> yeah, you need it. There needs to be a... There needs to be a story in here where if one or two people hop in the game, there's actually something for them to work towards and something for them to do that's meaningful. And with this game, it's it's right. It's kind of a role-playing sandbox game, but there's nobody here, which makes it like the actual like game content that's available is you you have the you have the very frustrating crafting system. I mean, it's unique. Where you roll the five die, and you have to get... I know for the weapon upgrade I wanted, no, or as an armor piece or something, I had to roll a 24 with five die. And, I had to, and every time it failed, I had to go collect new materials. It took, I think, 15 tries to actually roll a 24 on the five die. And I, I know that mm -hmm. ga games are based on, heavily based on random number generation. But to just put it in there in that way to make it that transparent. I mean, it's a, it's a unique looking s system, but it just takes you out of the world. And that's the one benefit this game could have if it had a single player campaign and story that you could do within this game. If, if it actually had a well-developed story that one or two people could do without having to have other people in the game role-playing, it could be a, a fun... MMORPG. Now with the subscription, I hate to bash small games like this because making even making a bad MMORPG takes a lot of talent and effort. Right. But but it, five, I think it's five dollars a month. That's I can't five dollars a month is too much. It, it, I know they need it cost to keep the servers running and everything, but I, I there's no way I could justify paying the five dollars a month for this game, even though that's dirt cheap, especially without anybody else playing. But yeah, there. Mm -hmm. So overall, the, the cute graphics. I I love the particle effects. You didn't so much. I mean, unique races and species. There's lacking in backstory. It's lacking in content for people to do that's interesting if you're just going in here solo or with a small group. And hey, it's not like I don't love the graphics. It's just mm -hmm. the snow or whatever that's coming yeah. at us. Yeah, the, the particle <laughs> effects. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's a, the particle effects. There's some on particle the screen. Particle effects. Right now, I'm show, I have some showing on the screen. Yeah. Like, it's fine there, but it's when you're running. It's just, like, all, like, in your face. Yeah, yeah this... Anyway, this video has been very rambly. We'll get we'll get this down and be more concise in the future, but... Yeah. yeah. There's... If you have a group of people and you find the graphics in the world interesting, if you can get a group of maybe 10 people together to hop on here and have five on each faction... And you're willing to grind quite a bit because this is a grindy game. You could have a, a a fun experience. 
But with the subscription and everything, I, I couldn't recommend this game. As far as my rating system goes, I... I was going to give it a D. I'll, I'll give it a C. It's an average game. That's what I gave it. <laughs> yeah. There's there's an interesting world here that, with some more content, this could be a an interesting game. But as is, it's a it's an empty world with that costs five dollars a month to experience, and with so many other games around, there's no way I could recommend somebody pay five dollars when the world is this empty as far as other players. This is a game that could really benefit from being put on Steam or another platform or just being advertised in another way, but it very much feels like feels like one person's passion project and that one person has very little care of what people think about that passion project. And I I hope this game continues. I hope the game stays online. They continue to improve it. But as is, it's just not for me. And you said it's not for you either, really. Very. In the end, it is a very mediocre experience. And we ended up just kind of dropping off due to the grind. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It, anyway, it's a. And if if you're willing to, it's, there's a 14 day trial. If you find the graphics here interesting in the world, check it out. You can get it on hammersend.com. It if you alt, try to alt tab out of the game though, it will shut the game down. I've noticed, so it does have some quirks to it. But yeah, we're I'm going to go ahead and give it the. I'll go ahead and adjust the score. I'll give it a C. Yay. <laughs> it is a very it's average it's a very average game there's when you look at the really bad games out there there's some really bad games out there and this it doesn't belong in that category so we'll go ahead and put our current rankings thus far up so far we've done Azeron's call we've done the universalist or tractor we've done the hammer's end and with the score of a C that puts Azeron's call First, the tractor second, and the hammer's end third. And in about 20 minutes, me and Cowabunga are going to do the Will to Live. And hopefully that video comes out a lot less rambly and the audio comes out better. But, oh, well, we, we got this video done. We'll continue to improve. And hope everybody enjoyed. Have a great day. And, Meg, you can go ahead and give your any final thoughts or your goodbye. Well, I hope people enjoy the video and um, just have everybody have a great night.